Gorbiev from Perth, Australia. He's an associate professor of national security and strategic studies over at Curtin University. Alexi, always good to have you on the show. Uh, this is a, a unique scenario. I mean, I have to say, you have a borrower uh, which basically has the willingness and resources to pay, but it can't. Well, it's a matter of can't and possibly won't. Uh, because it's not it's not the fact that Russia doesn't have the resources. I mean, the Russians obviously were making more money than they had uh, over the same uh, period from last year. So since the start of the sanctions war following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, because of the lucrative um, uh, conjuncture on on the on the energy uh, mar markets, the Russians have been generating so much cash that uh, they cannot be simply uh, uh, be without it. And, and certainly, even as they say, you know, $100 million of, um, uh, of uh, immediate repayments is not something that Russia cannot really uh, 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 not, not afford. The matter is that uh, on, on one hand, the West imposed sanctions on, 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 on Russian financial institutions, on the fiscal system, restraining their transactions by using SWIFT and other um, uh, established channels. On the other hand, as part of Russia's counter sanctions, the Russian government banned um, uh, its banks from um, undertaking transactions uh, in, in hard currency with so-called non-friendly nations. And obviously the Russians were borrowing those, uh, uh, those obligations, those bonds from what they now describe non-friendly nations. You know, the West uh, uh, the developed economies, etc. So it, it has become a question of technical um, uh, capacity as well as political will. So mm -hmm. the Russians, on one hand, are saying, "Yes, we've got the money; we're willing to pay, but we want to do it on our terms, or in return, um, uh, lift the sanctions and allow us to get back into the world financial system." Alexei, you say on the one hand that Russia is in the situation because of Western sanctions being imposed on, on its banking system. I want to ask you uh, how much you think are Western sanctions really hurting the Russian economy? Yes, they've barred the import of Russian oil. Uh, oil. Uh, gold is on the table, as we're seen from the G7 meeting, and they're looking at ways to sort of reduce dependency on Russian gas. But uh, the fact of the matter is that the plan to, to, to pile pain on uh, the Russian president, uh, forcing him to sort of reconsider uh, his war in Ukraine. Honestly, it hasn't worked. Look, I mean, coming, coming back to the later part of your question, uh, even if the Russian economy is suffering, and there is no doubt that it is, uh, Putin will have no will of his own, nor he is currently in a position to, to actually back down from uh, from his hardline approach towards Ukraine, simply because he managed to mobilize the Russian society. And the, and the majority of the Russians, as surprising and shocking as it is in my sound, demand victory in Ukraine, demand victory over Ukraine. So for Putin's personal survival as the head of state, bearing in mind that he probably has an ambition to go back and, and, and put his uh, nomination for the next round of presidential elections, which are due to be held in Russia in March 2024, uh, uh, Putin simply cannot back down uh, in, in, in this sense. Uh, with regards to the, um, uh, the impact of sanctions on the Russian economy, there are, uh, there are elements of the Russian economy that are suffering, including the high-tech elements, the um, uh, sectors of the Russian economy that continue to be dependent on, on the supplies of foreign, mil uh, uh, foreign um, uh, spare parts, uh, uh, including the, the microchips, for example, and, and high-end goods, et cetera. But the majority of the Russians that effectively don't in, indulge in any kind of luxurious lifestyle, they haven't, had, uh, they haven't felt the impact of the sanctions as yet because, for example, banning Russians uh, from having uh, properties uh, overseas or restraining them from having access to um, um, uh, bank accounts with high currency, for example, U.S. dollar bank, bank accounts. But the majority of the Russians, this is not the problem. So they still get along with their lives. They're probably seeing some uh, uh, hikes in, 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 in prices for um, uh, groceries, daily goods, et cetera, et cetera. There is some inconvenience, like, for example, for residents of Kaliningrad landscape after Lithuanian imposed sanctions. 
but it's not it's the russia the russians haven't gone through this period when they really began feeling the shock of those um, um massive uh, tsunami of, mm. of sanctions that's been imposed on russia of the past uh, uh, three or four months alexi if you say that regular russians aren't feeling the effects of of western sanctions let me actually go back to uh russia defaulting on this on this bond payment last night i mean so it, it, it's largely symbolic i mean when you look at it, it's nothing more than a catchy headline. Yes, Russia defaulting on its debt for the first time in a century. But when you look at it, uh, Russia is already uh, an economic uh, financial outcast in, uh, across most of the world. Well, yes, and so to me, to me, this the declaration of default, default is more of a technical matter, and but certainly has a very strong political connotation because it's a signal to those countries who continue to have trade relations with Russia, who continue not to oppose what Russia is doing, not, not obviously supporting that, but not opposing uh, Russia's actions. And, and that includes major, uh, major economies such as India, China, and, 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 and others, uh, that uh, Russia is on the watch list. Um, Russia is on the economic watch list. And, and certainly Russia's reputation as a reliable trading partner, as a reliable financial partner, should suffer as a result of this declaration. On one hand, as I said, Russians are taking very tough stand on, on simply not following this, this line of dealing with transactions because uh, de dealing with transactions in hard currencies.